Well, uh, hello and welcome to the future of uh, digital learning practices and metrics to drive success. A deep discussion held in partnership with Class Technologies and Zoom web conferencing. My name is Sanjay Kumar and I am the commercial director at Edutech Middle East. I'll be chairing today's session. We are joined by experts and decision makers from leading education technology companies. So I would like to introduce you to you to Shamima Paveen, CEO of Edutech, Massimo Gentili, head of EMEA Class Technologies, and Iha Fedel, regional account executive Mina for Zoom. Thank you to our panel for speaking today and the audience for taking the time out to be here. We will be taking questions throughout the session. So please feel free to drop your questions in the Q&A box and we'll get to them at the end. The focus on online learning over the past two years sparked innovation and creativity for instructors, staff and administrations. Instead of looking back, it is now time to define the future of online learning in terms of implementation practices and outcomes. Through understanding the metrics and best practices driving student success, we can begin to develop a new future of digital learning. With that as an introduction, let's get started. And it's now over to Shamima Paveen, CEO of Edutech. Microphone, Shamima, you're muted. I think after the past two years, I still haven't figured out how to unmute myself, but um, I'm getting there. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for taking the time to attend our session today, connected along with Class Technologies. We're just going to give a very small introduction to who we are as a company and why we are doing what we are doing before we get on to about class. Uh, Edutech, as many of you might have known or may not uh, have been in the edtech industry since 1991, when the term edutech or edtech was not as popular or as well known. When we started off, we created the organization with uh, the vision of using technology to transform education and to build an innovative future, which is what we continue to do today. We at Edutech also believe in lifelong learning and specifically in today's environment where learning does not stop when we enter workplace or even at any one particular career. We have also built our solutions and our partnership based on the deep understanding that we have of the education systems, but also the technologies that are available to help address the learning needs at all levels. And our success has only been possible because of our customer success, and that's the primary focus for us day in and day out. While we continue to build the solutions, we are always looking future forward. We're thinking about the needs and of the education and the industry and societies on the skills that are required to build what is now called the fourth industrial era. And that's what we keep in mind while we introduce solutions to our customers. Now, I think you all might agree that we today live in an environment that was nothing in the experience in January 2020. And I think this term of new normal is something that we have uh, accepted because the world has indeed changed. And so has education in a very large part. What we have seen is actually more than so before, education is now part of a larger ecosystem, a part of a larger network with multiple touch points and stakeholders who are involved in decision making and involved in shared responsibilities. So it's just not only between students and the education system of teachers, 
but a whole network of stakeholders involved in it, like parents, employers, policy and advocacies, investors, a huge amount of entrepreneurs providing different solutions that are required and the government. And this is in fact brought up quite a lot of new changes in the education system itself where we now beginning to value not just the outcomes in terms of students' performance and achievements, but also the processes. How are students learning? How are their learning experience of the students itself is being recognized as an intrinsic value that is expected by the students as well as the other stakeholders as well. For example, the emphasis and understanding of the different pedagogies that are being used in education is now more aware that even parents, for example, understand what active learning is or what play-based learning is and expect the classrooms and the education institutions to have a more modern pedagogical approach to the teaching process itself. And that's where I think concepts like active learning play a huge role right now. And also there is a huge uh, emphasis on learning through cohorts where students are learning not just from the teachers, but learning amongst each others as well. Using connections that they have, realizing that we ultimately learn from each other, but use technology as a tool to initiate that. Also more uh, Awareness of assessments not being just a once in a year, end of the term kind of a process, but a constant process specifically in formative assessment that enhances the learning opportunities, not just to bucket students in levels, which is what summative assessments did. It just helps build a better learning experience for teachers knowing what students are learning and at what levels they are. And I think the term blended learning and hybrid learning are now going to stay. Um, while blended learning has been a common concept within education with the introduction of digital technologies many years back, I think with the, with the experience of the pandemic, we also realized at least for some years to come, we are going to be having a hybrid learning model to follow because while the pandemic maybe is on the way, there's already talks of newer variants coming up. But the pandemic doesn't have to be the only wake up call for us because we have a number of different uh, challenges that we have on the anvil, like climate change, for example, which could be another disruptor, another black swan even, which we may have to adopt newer approaches to learning. The other aspects that have certainly uh, come of value is uh, an emphasis on micro credentials where students continue to learn and uh, collect badges or proof of learning smaller skill set rather than having to wait for a two, three year uh, university program. And last but not the least, I think what has really changed is an awareness and acceptance of the new cost models in education, where I think we need to be looking at a more innovative approach in terms of being able to provide education at a reasonable cost to students, but also for the uh, education institutions to be able to have a, a cost that is more acceptable for them. With all of these changes, we have in fact adopted a lot of technologies, for example, Zoom, and many teachers or education institutions have felt that we may not need them anymore. But these changes that we experience are going to stay with us forever because our education has changed in the way that we have imparted and have accepted before. So we see that these changes are continuing to exist in the coming years and maybe even be elevated more levels as well. And hence the reason why we would like today to take an opportunity to talk to you more about how a technology like class would help ensure that the learning experience you're providing in your institutions continue to be at the highest level possible. And towards this, I invite Massimo Gentili from Class Technologies to 
introduce and uh, run us through what class can do towards improving learning outcomes in education. Massimo. Thank you very much, Shamima, for the introduction. And uh, thank you to all attendees today to take the time to, to be with us. So just give me a quick second and I will share my screen. Okay, so you should be able to see my screen now. Uh, just a quick introduction. Um, I've been working for the last 20 years in um, primarily in education technology. And actually I have a lot of experience also working with EduTech in my previous companies. And uh, basically my, my personal goal is actually to, you know, to add value to educational institutions or corporations that want to implement cutting edge technologies in order to look at the future and, uh, and make the entire teaching and learning experience, you know, a, a valuable experience that is going to provide, you know, a lot of uh, um, you know, value added to, to the end users, so the students at the end of the day. Let me walk you through, uh, you know, a few things before we look at class more closely. So looking at the virtual classroom, as you know, you know, the, the virtual classroom technology, you know, they started developing this type of technology more than 20 years ago. And the concept was different, right? So today we're looking at uh, very high quality technologies that are expected to increase engagement. I mean, engagement is key. As you see in our, you know, in the, the title that we put on this webinar, you know, we're talking about best practices. We're talking about student success. So driving engagement means driving student success. Because if we implement the correct technologies and we use them, you know, in, uh, in, in the best possible way, then we can have uh, definitely a very strong impact, you know, on, uh, on the students. Looking at what actually institutions, you know, expect from technologies like, like virtual classroom. Um, I mean, during the pandemic, we've seen that there was really kind of you know, vertical growth on this adoption because it, there was an emergency, right? But a lot of institutions have primarily implemented video conferencing solutions rather than a real virtual classroom. And, and the thing is, everybody has realized now that uh, there is a strong need for flexibility. So basically this, this technology needs to be able to actually adapt to different teaching methodologies. And, uh, and there could be totally you know, different scenarios, let's say. You can have a pure online learning, you can have you know, high flex learning. And Shamima was talking about these different scenarios that actually you know, have, uh, you know, have become kind of normal now. It's the new normal thing, right? And going forward, you know, actually institutions uh, lots of institutions understand that the, this is the, the new way, let's say, to, to, you know, to implement it, to provide the best value you know, to, to, their, uh, to their students. So need for flexibility, need for accessibility, because this type of platform can actually address equity and opportunity gaps. Uh, we see actually more and more students, uh, students at work or students that have you know, difficulties to actually attend in-campus type of events or courses that actually, you know, thanks to that, they can, uh, they can participate to courses in a way that is totally different from the way it was done in the past. So there is actually an active learning. You know, it's, it, it's actually a, a, a very comprehensive experience that we're talking about. And then they expect a personalized experience, obviously, because it, it depends on the different scenarios that, you know, that we mentioned, and it depends on the type of student we're talking about. But what is important is, you know, at class, we have been thinking about, you know, what is it, you know, uh, in particular during the pandemic that went well, and what didn't go, you know, quite well. Because we see institutions that have started, you know, implementing this uh, solution for the first time. Some others had already implemented this classroom before, uh, obviously, but, uh, but still, there is something that uh, looks kind of outdated, right? We're talking about synchronous learning. So we're not talking about replicating some pieces of the actions of the activities that you normally do in a physical you know, environment, but we're talking more about a, a different way to drive engagement. So from class, you know, we ended up you know, actually preparing this slide that hopefully is gonna clarify the way we see things. So 
let's consider the physical classroom. That's what you see on the uh, on the left side of this of this slide, and then the virtual classroom. I don't know how many of you have, have got teaching experience, but if somebody has been teaching at least once uh, on his entire life, you know, you know that the moment you enter, by the way, I have also teaching experience. That's what I did more than 20 years ago before entering technology. That's why I also get very passionate about it. So when you enter a physical classroom, uh, then you start engaging with your students, right? You look at them in the eyes and uh, you start talking to them. You have content that you create and you start sharing. Uh, you can use a blackboard or you can use actually a smart board, whatever you want, a lab bench, you know, you are in a chemistry lab or whatever. But there is actually a lot of, you know, exchange in terms of uh, verbal communications and content. Uh, you may decide to divide them in different groups and they need to study. And actually in each group, there is a lot of interactions, right? And then you need actually also to track attendance. You need a great book. Uh, there is a lot of things that you do and it's, it's, it's flawless, right? So basically you start doing things and then you don't stop because you can start talking to them. You can share some content. You can divide them into groups and then go back into content, ask questions. It's something that is very dynamic, the environment. When you go into a virtual classroom, Lots of these activities are simply lost, are lost because the, the technology use is not going to be able to replicate an in-person experience. It's just a portion of it. So we calculated that 6% of that is normally gone missing. And that's what is generating this, um, this lack of engagement, actually, from, from many students. Um, I've seen actually in, uh, in, in, in some institutions that they kind of hate it, right? Because if you don't implement the technology correctly and you don't have, you know, the right tools, then it's going to become really frustrating, you know, when you start getting, you know, whether it's a university or a school, when you start your, you know, your class and you simply need to waste, uh, you know, 15 minutes just to track the attendance. And then when you need to share some content and you want to share something else, you need to stop, relaunch, you know, these activities. It's really a lot of time wasted and, and you're gonna, you know, lose the attention and the focus. So what happens is this actually, uh, a year ago, class was created by Michael Chasen, uh, the former co-founder of Blackboard. And uh, looking at markets, um, class look at what, uh, you know, um, at a video conferencing solutions, you know, very solid. And the attention was definitely on Zoom. Zoom is a, is, is a great platform that allows with their SDK to build new platform that can sit on top of Zoom. And that's why how actually class was created. Class as an interface, class is a separate solutions that can sit on top of Zoom and use Zoom underlying technologies. The thing is that this interface is totally different from Zoom and it had a lot of areas of functionalities that transform Zoom into a real virtual classroom environment. Well, actually what we called a live learning environment uh, because it actually reflects this new concept, the new perspective that, uh, that we have uh, for what you know, uh, refers to a synchronous learning environment. So we have had to the structure tools, learning, engagement functionality. So basically uh, the, the, the functionality that allow an instructor to be in charge of his class and start actually, um, you know, engaging with the student at several levels. And, uh, and then you know, last but not the least, you can run analytics and, and a lot of other things. So basically we have created the class interface. And I'm gonna give you a quick look, you know, right after. So as you can see in this slide, this is actually our goal is to have a, a one-stop solution where class can do everything you may require as an instructor, as a teacher, as a professor to run your synchronous learning activities. So we do not ask our clients actually to drop their uh, learning management system. Whether you're using Desire to Learn, Moodle uh, or, uh, or Blackboard or Schoology or Sakai or whatever you're using, um, that's your asynchronous learning platform. So class is what you require to plug in for the synchronous communication and collaboration components. And we integrate seamlessly actually with this. So basically we can allow single sign on. And all the activities that you need to do to drive your classroom, 
you can do it in class. So you don't need to plug in additional tools. You need to run exams, for example, quizzes, you know, for your day-to-day -day operations, as Shamima was mentioned, not just for the final degree examination, but, you know, for your ongoing activities, you stay in class. You can launch the product view, and you can actually uh, create even courses, and you can have the gradebook integrated. So basically, it's, it's everything in class, can happen in class in a very easy to use interface. So why, why class then? It's because we believe that uh, there is a strong need for these basic tools to drive the student engagement. And to go back to what I was saying at the beginning, student engagement is driving student success. And uh, although we have a tremendous team of engineers that are developing you know, the interface itself, uh, we also have a separate team of people that are specialized in education, with PhD in education, with teachers, professors, that actually are working with class to provide feedback and to tell us exactly what they need, because this is what then our engineer transforms into class in new areas of functionalities. And class is built on education, which is something also different from, from what you see from, from any platform. It's something that, uh, you know, we keep this in mind and uh, we always have, you know, the, the, the students are basically a, the, the ultimate goal for us is to make the life of the students, you know, easier, uh, more comfortable, where they can learn at their own pace, actually, and, uh, and you know, they can, uh, I, we can increase the chances of success for them. But obviously, we keep in mind the structure. So the professors, the teachers, you know, needs, uh, need to be able to actually use our platform, our technology, you know, very easily. They don't need to waste time learning complex technologies. And, uh, and, and then, you know, they, they can actually focus on, uh, on their class, you know, activities. And before I show you something about class itself, the interface, let me show you this slide. We have created a class strategic advisory board, I say. So uh, there are a number of clients that, and we have reference clients as well, obviously, that, uh, are using class and work closely with us to keep on developing, um, you know, our our interface at a different level. So uh, before we go, just give me a quick second uh, before we see the interface. I would like to show you a quick video testimonial from one of our or our clients that I started actually using class last year. Hey, I am John Louvier, the Executive Director from Utah State University's Academic and Instructional Services. In March of 2020, we were required to provide remote instruction for the safety of our students and our faculty and our staff. It's been a challenge. When I was first introduced to class, I was extremely intrigued because of the learning experience that class was providing. Class is one of the first products I've seen that's actually tailored for the virtual classroom. Classroom attendance, taking polls, and even having assignments as a seamless integration within this learning environment. If you're an educator and focus on personalizing learning, using class allows you to not only see the nonverbal reactions of your students, but to provide timely chats, breakout rooms, and other discussion and engaging opportunities that promote teaching and learning. We're going to need to rethink how we're going to interact and engage in research and classroom content in places and ways that we have never done before. Class is a product that is going to set the standard for a virtual classroom in the future. Okay, good. Uh, thank you. Thank you for watching this as well. And uh, I would like just to have a few minutes to show you our, our interface, our live interface. Um, so you can see actually in practice what I've been uh, talking about. I'm sharing now uh, a sandbox where you see our user interface. I'm gonna just wait with you just to show you that this is not actually a video. Uh, the student that you see here and there is uh, are part of actually our simulations, but uh, the, live interface is actually the real one. So when you see myself, uh, 
that is called actually the podium, right? And uh, that's where you can have, uh, um, you know, the instructor, the, the teacher, the professors, I can actually move somebody else and I can move myself uh, across the room. So this is actually my own room. Let's say that I'm the professor of chemistry, right? So I have my virtual classroom. So this means that in order to replicate actually a real in-person experience, this is gonna be my virtual classroom every time for the entire semester or, or school year or academic year that I'm actually using a virtual classroom. Why this is important? Because I have my own set of students for this specific course, right? So the system is gonna track down, track down through the analytics, whatever happens into this room. And I can actually add additional cameras. You see that right below myself, where you see now Anmal, the new instructor, uh, you see that there is actually a class camera, which is something that you pretty much plug and play, and then you can link it to, to this, or, you could, you could have it actually in a kind of, you know, hybrid learning type of uh, activities, or you can pin under the structures, actually an additional camera that is pointed to a blackboard, or maybe it's showing actually something that you have on your iPad. You could even decide actually to remove it from the structures and pin it right at the center of the room, wherever you want to focus the attention of, of your students, right? So it just depends on that. Um, why I'm showing this? Because it happens actually that you know an instructor needs actually to plug in additional cameras and normally they need to call a technician or somebody in charge of IT to help you out. Now this is very easy to use in class so basically we empower teacher and instructor to do things like that very easily on a day-to-day -day. whenever they want to do it they just actually they know how to do it and we train people you know on and how to do even these things. So if you see right below that and there are five tabs and again, we have designed that for, you know, to make it very easy to use and find where you need to click, where you need to go. So the first tab is showing actually a list of students. And, you know, the moment I get into this room, I see exactly who are the people present, uh, you know, present into this room. So I see the instructor, I see the students, I see the cameras, and I see also the absent students. So the, actually the system, whether you access class as a standalone product, or integrated with your learning management system into your specific course, the system is gonna track down the attendance. And not only the attendance, but also, you know, lots of the activities that your students will perform. And then you can go to another tab called class management tools. We have, you know, different actually uh, functionalities, but if you click on the dashboard, you can have immediately information about the activities into this room. And then you can click on student details and you can see here the list of the student for this specific session, but it could be for the entire semester or, or academic year. And then you see who's present, who's not, the time in, the time out. So you can actually see even the focus, uh, their talk time, how much they participate. So you have all this data that you can then download and use for administrative purposes or pedagogical purposes. I mean, it just depends how you want to use it. But we track analytics and obviously we have integrated you know, a great book and, and other actually functionalities. So going back, you know, to, you know, to the many areas here where you see the participants, if we move to the right, you see that now you have a gallery view, very typical of, uh, of Zoom, as you know. And actually at the bottom, you see the media bar where you can find easily, you know, the video, the audio, you can actually record the sessions and, uh, and, uh, and then you have breaker room and proctor view. So you can have, you know, access to these functionalities. I think what's interesting for, you know, for, in particular for uh, the instructors is that, um, as I was mentioning before, when you start doing an activity, you know, if you want to move to something else, then you need to stop what you're doing, move to something else, but you cannot go back. You need to relaunch it. I give you an example. Now I have, I can see all my students, right? And I put on the first row, actually, the assistants. So, um, or the other structures that could be, you know, with me on, uh, you know, in this class, right? And uh, I could move myself back to the podium. I can have the rest of the people there. Or maybe I could actually even remove this, this front room and have everybody just there in, a, you know, in, a, in the gallery view. What happened is I want to share material, right? So I can go to the top teaching tool that you see right below the podium and I can find syllabus, I can share files, so I can actually prepare here a list of files. I can preload them 
a use and launch them whenever they want it, right? So if I launch a, you know, one of these pieces of content, it could be, you know, a PowerPoint, a PDF, or, you know, lots of other type of content, then I'm sharing this content, everybody can see that, right? But uh, I could also launch a video and I can preload these videos or, or do it on the fly. So when I do that, then I can retain actually full control, you know, of the video itself. But I could go back to what I was sharing before and I could go back to the classroom itself. So basically, in order to replicate an in-person experience, I should be able actually to, you know, to always, you know, actually look at the students, you know, talk to them, go and start sharing content and go back to what I was doing before. Because that's natural. That's what happens you normally, you know, during a classroom. And if I decide to launch a quiz, I could go here. You see what it says, assessment, quizzes, and tests. I could either use and preload what I have already created or create a new one. Because I have an assessment generator, you know, with lots of quizzes and actually multiple choice questions, you know, lots of options that could be actually integrated into, into class. It's already integrated there. And then I could launch this tab. Now, when I launch a tab, actually, with a quiz, you can see that the system is showing a quiz that I have prepared. But if I click on the tab classroom, I see all of them. So basically, this is a public tab, right, that everybody sees at the same time. When I'm sharing content, you know, in another tab, this is being seen by everybody, like a video. But when I launch a quiz, then it's different because this is going to be an individual experience for each student. So basically every student will be able to take a quiz and not see, be able to see what the others do in their own quiz. And if I go to the main classroom, I could launch even a product review. So launching a product review, it's very easy. I can start it. And every student will get a pop window where it says, you know, share your desktop basically. So I'm going to be able to see uh, live their video and whatever they have on uh, their desktop, the full desktop. So in this case, for example, if I see that they're having, you know, on their desktop, uh, what I have launched actually, and they're taking this, I know they're not cheating, right? And there are also other ways that we can see actually here where the system is flagging me. So basically there is a way to control and to run some exams for your day-to-day -day operations, implementing this type of proctoring tool that is part of class, you know, and it's native actually, and, uh, and keep control of, uh, you know, what the students are doing. And when you finish the product review, you can end the, you know, the product review for all and go back. So basically you have, you know, this uh, uh, tab navigation here on top, you see the different tabs. You can actually, you know, uh, navigate them through these tabs. You can run quizzes and still, you know, have a full control and manage very quickly what, uh, what people can do actually inside a classroom and interact with them. And another thing, because I know that in the uh, times of the essence here, so I wanted to show you something else. But there is a lot that can show you how much you can engage with your students, even if you want to just launch a breakout rooms, right? So if you, you know that you have breakout rooms in Zoom as well, which is great, are great. But in those breakout rooms, you can do audio, video, you can do desktop sharing. Here we're talking about what we call advanced grade breakout rooms. So I could divide, for example, all my students automatically or manually into different groups. And once I do it, I could reassign even people from a room to another one. I could open all rooms. And what is really cool here is that you see that you have, you know, as a professor, I have this dashboard. So I can see actually live with a continued refresh of what's happening in the different rooms. And I could click on the top right corner and actually launch a web page or a video or a file or an assignment, an assessment, whatever I want. So every room can work in a different way. And I could actually be the only one that can go in and out from the different rooms and actually participate in these activities. So I can have one room people that are just taking an exam or an assessment while in another one, actually, they're, they're co-working and editing uh, a specific file of, you know, or, or using a specific applications, but I can do that live, right? And at the same time, Actually, I, you know, I could, for example, you know, check on the chat area, the different breakout rooms, get into the, you know, the individual breakout rooms, actually chat, and I can monitor and participate even from outside.
Well, there is a lot to do, actually, a lot to show you, but I think I'm going to start here. Last but not the least, I can show you that we have a tab node that we just released now where you can have a light transcript and have your own notes. So basically, each individual student can actually have access to the, you know, to the notes and take them live. Uh, which is something that the system is helping a lot. Well, I'm going to start with here. I'm going to give you, I'll pass it over actually to my colleague Ehab from Zoom, and I'm going to be happy to answer any questions you may have from class. Thank you. Uh, yes, before Ehab starts, uh, just I wanted to uh, let the attendees know that we are taking a note of the questions. We already have a question from Marva. I'll let uh, Massimo answer that after uh, Ehab uh, has finished so that we can all answer the questions uh, together. So please uh, keep your questions coming. Uh, we will gather them all together and answer after Yehab has finished uh, his uh, presentation. Over to you, Yehab. Thank you very much, Massimo. Great presentation there. And we just wanted to walk you very quickly about what Zoom has done in education. So as you're aware, Zoom is a UC platform that provides uh, solutions across meetings, webinars, and many other solutions. And this is a really important subject we're talking about today, which is blended learning. And just to step back as to where we were in the pandemic, if you recall, we were in-person learning, then we went into remote learning, then we went into hybrid learning, and then we went back <laughs> again into online learning. So we've been through uh, different types of learning modes. And I think right now, we really need to uh, look at how to bring about the best solutions in terms of uh, edutech solutions. And you know, the class platform is an amazing platform. And what I wanted to show you today is what Zoom has been doing in education. Zoom has been very uh, much involved in education. And education is actually one of our key uh, sectors that we're really involved in. So without further ado, let me take it into uh, what we have been doing in terms of Zoom and the platform itself. So Zoom has done a lot of stuff in terms of their solution. They started off with uh, pretty much, you know, adding things like uh, video gallery, multi-screening, uh, share screening, screenshots, virtual backgrounds, and all of these technologies actually made it great for something like class for zoom to be uh, implemented so the class for zoom solution is amazing for a hybrid learning because as massimo mentioned if you're an instructor and you're giving lessons you are not going to be able to do things like attendees finding who has attended my session today or you know who is struggling i need to set up a breakout session or let me create a poll to see who is struggling with the lessons um, maybe i need to do a quick check to see if the uh, material covered was successful or not. So just to show you what has happened, I mean, since the uh, pandemic in terms of with education and how Zoom has been really focused on that part. Uh, if we step back in 2019, and now we look at 2021, from 2019 to 2021, um, we had 7 billion minutes per month of education minutes being used. In 2021, it was 240 billion. So if you just do the math, that's like a 3,400% increase. So you can see uh, really what happened in 2019, people were just getting uh, acclimatized, getting ready to use remote learning, digital learning. But now digital learning has become a standard. So whether you're in a university, you're in a school learning center, you really have to use uh, digital learning to go on through. And then if you look at the total minutes per month, it was at 45 million for Zoom for education, and now it's at 600 million. So that's also a, quite a dramatic increase. And the same goes for the uh, meeting attendees. Now, what a lot of people don't know about Zoom, if you, if you look at Zoom, a lot of people just believe Zoom is the meeting platform, but actually Zoom is a one platform for education. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have your meeting sessions, you can also conduct webinars, just like the webinar we're conducting today. This is on Zoom webinars. You also have Zoom phones. So this will connect your whole campus together. So imagine you're in a campus with 1000 students. Now you have one platform in your laptop or your computer. You can actually have your meetings, your webinars, your rooms, your apps all integrated in one. 
And the Zoom rooms is, is, is something which is pretty exciting because that actually enables your conference rooms or your auditoriums in school to be Zoom enabled. And what I mean uh, by that is, let's say you go into a conference room or a auditorium and you have 200 uh, students in the class. By having that screen inside the auditorium being Zoom enabled, what I do is I can actually have the instructor give a lesson for people in the class and people remotely. So let's say um, I was conducting a lesson at a university, but I have 50 students who are actually remote. The, the students who are remote will be able to see uh, all the students who are physical. And the way we do that is by something called smart classrooms, which actually uh, involves installing a lot of cameras, mics within the uh, auditorium. And then with that, you actually integrate the Zoom Room solution to your auditorium. Now, moving into what are some of the things you can do when you're in a school or you're in a university um, where you can actually bring the Zoom solution all together. So let's assume you are in a university. In a university, if you have the Zoom platform, what you'd be able to do and, uh, along with your uh, class for Zoom, for example, let's say you implemented that. You can now use it not just for your learning practices, but you can also use it for your administrative practices. So you can do some teaching and learning, whether it's breakout sessions, um, you have after class support, you have synchronous courses, you have online courses, hybrid courses, but at the same time, the support staff, uh, a lot of times people forget about the support staff giving the lessons. And we found out during the pandemic why the support staff are very crucial because what happened is during the pandemic, uh, a lot of people were just told overnight, okay, tomorrow you're gonna give an online class, here you go, here's your license, you're gonna be giving a session to 5,000 students without getting training, without getting introduction, how to use the system. And one of the cool things about Zoom and also class for Zoom, by the way, is the ease of use. Uh, and, and you know the class for Zoom solution and both Zoom, because it's built on the Zoom platform, it's very easy, it's very easy to integrate. And uh, it, it's very much uh, easy in terms of setting it up, configuring it and uh, doing all the work. So if you look at a campus or if you look at a school, you have multiple areas where you can actually use the Zoom solution. You can also do customization. And what I mean by customization is let's assume you're in a university and you don't want people actually logging to the main Zoom page. You can actually customize the web page so that you say, uh, when you log in, you, you go to your uh, landing page. You can actually customize, have the landing page and you can have the join and configuration settings for that university. And this makes the Zoom solution uh, part and parcel of your university. Now over to some use cases of, you know, if you're in a university or school, what are some of the feature use cases you will use the Zoom solution for? So this, as you can see, is a very interesting diagram. And the way I look at it is, if you look, you have the teaching and learning in blue, which is one of the crucial parts, uh, pretty much in terms of the staff instruction. The orange is kind of your virtual classes in terms of your online learning. The, the other light orange is your student engagement. So this is uh, where your students are doing some career advisory, career counseling. Maybe you have some students trying to figure out which universities are they gonna go to. They have some advisory with some of the staff at school. And then the light blue areas on the left side, this is mostly the administration in terms of staff training, administration, going through audits, going through accounting, going through staff meetings, HR interviews, et cetera, which can be used for the platform. Now, uh, as you're aware, a lot of the feature sets uh, include things like screen sharing and pre-assigned breakout rooms, which Massimo had mentioned earlier on. Uh, there's also some actual cool slides and cool features we've brought in. Uh, one of the key things we're doing in Zoom right now, we have a new solution set, which will be interpretation. So let's say I'm talking now, there's gonna be an interpretation in 12 different languages in CC, closed captioning. So as I'm speaking in English, you'll see a closed captioning at the bottom and you can change the language. So you can see the closed captioning in French, Spanish, Italian, and it will be up to 12 languages. And hopefully we're gonna be adding Arabic. And this is actually all done in artificial intelligence uh, uh, through an AI uh, algorithm. So you can imagine this would be really good also from an accessibility uh, standpoint where you're gonna have some students who and are not able to listen in into the class, they can actually look at the CC. Uh, so this will be an actual really cool solution to be added. Now, 
over to what we actually offer also from a Zoom education standpoint. Zoom actually provides education licenses to universities and schools. And one of the things we do is as part of the education license, you can give students free licenses. So if you do a campus-wide uh, licensing, let's say your university, you can give the faculty paid licenses and then all your students will be able to get uh, free licenses. And of course, there's also the added uh, functionality of having SSO, so like single sign-on. So if you're coming into the campus, you can use the same domain and you can all log in with a single username. So you don't have to have multiple usernames, passwords uh, to get in and use your Zoom license. And of course, there's also the integration uh, which with the LMS, which we have discussed uh, earlier on. And I wanted to take you very quickly through some of our existing customers that we have. Um, so we have, and we continue to build a lot of partnerships with uh, university customers. I mean, here in the region, we have quite a number of universities and schools where uh, LinkedIn, but these are some of our long-term customers. So Harvard University, Oxford University, the list goes on. And we have a lot of partnerships. And I wanted to give you some uh, simple use cases where we have actually implemented the Zoom education solution. So for example, in Western Sydney, um, we have around 5,000 staff and students are actually using Zoom meetings. And it's really cool because they also set up uh, smart classrooms. And in the smart classrooms, you have uh, dedicated uh, microphones, cameras in each of the classrooms with multiple screens across the class. So even if you are not able to attend a class during the uh, certain week, you can actually attend remotely and be able to connect with the students. So it's you get the experience as if you're really there on campus. Another uh, interesting uh, case study we have is also with California State University. Now, in their case, they're actually using our Zoom platform, not just for meetings, but they're also using it for phones. So all their phone systems across the campus are also using Zoom uh, you know, um, telephony and solutions. And it's a one platform in that they have their meetings, they have their webinars, uh, they have their rooms and their Zoom phones all connected. Uh, and just finally, uh, wanted to close out by just saying that with digital learning, if you look at how we are uh, moving into kind of a digital learning world, um, we have to remember that there's multiple learning modes that are coming uh, right in there. And right now I've just seen a recent, uh, um, you know, public announcement that's happened and maybe Masivan could talk about it, is that the uh, class for Zoom along with uh, D2L, Desire to Learn, have actually set up a partnership. And this is gonna be amazing because they can now provide different types of learning. So you'll do blended learning with many multiple uh, education facets. But uh, thank you very much, and I'll turn it over to Sanjay. Thank you, uh, thank you Ihab, uh, for wonderful presentation and uh, your thoughts. Uh, we will now open the floor uh, for questions. Um, we already have uh, one question, of course, it's uh, two questions in one question from Marwa. But uh, I will encourage uh, other participants as well. Please feel free to just type in your question or if you would like to raise a hand and uh, comment on anything or make an observation ask a question please do so so massimo uh, question to you from marwa is how does class support accessibility that's the first question and the second question again to you is uh, does the tool the class tool feature learning and analytics so Masuma, would you like to take that? Yeah, yeah, of course. So first of all, let's talk about you know, the accessibility, which is very important to us. As you know, we are an American company and uh, we take that very seriously. And so uh, we measure against the, what is called the VPAT, so the Voluntary Product Accessibility Template. So that, that is a document that basically evaluates how accessible a specific product is according to the Section 508 standards. So we measure against that. And we passed actually the VPAT. Uh, we did actually, uh, we did it in, in, in two phases last year. And uh, we also provide clients where, you know, with that type of visibility, how we measure against the VPAT, but actually, you know, we pass that, we comply with that. It's considered that uh, is in line with, uh, with the street rule using in the US for accessibility. Uh, for example, like the screen readers and, uh, and other options, but uh, um, if you want, we can definitely follow up uh, uh, offline, you know, with that. Uh, 
Yeah. In terms of learning analytics, um, as I was at least briefly showing during my demonstration, there is an entire area that actually we keep on improving where uh, the instructor can access you know, the analytics of uh, a specific section or, or, or a range of sections where you can see each individual student and you can run reporting about not only the attendance, but actually the way you know they do lots of things like even the talk time or the participations or or how much they're focusing on the lessons we have different ways to do that and again it requires more time to go granular into that but what i can assure you is that you can access those analytics you can extract them and then use it you know uh, the way the way you prefer but it's an important component of the way we keep on design our technologies and the new functionalities that we keep on adding to our platform hope these answer your question thanks massimo uh, i think uh, that uh, would answer the question from uh, marwa uh, the question has got two likes so i'm sure it has answered the question of more than marwa more than one person so any more questions please feel free While we're waiting, there is a question that I normally get. Maybe somebody is too shy to ask it here, but uh, uh, I just want to share it. Lots of people may be worried about the way or the complexity of the integration with Zoom, for example, or yeah. with the e-learning platform. But I just want to reassure everybody that uh, with Zoom is an out of the box integration. So basically, there is nothing really that on the end user side they need to do. It's a, it's, it's a very straightforward integration that we do, and nobody will perceive that. And uh, when we install class, we do it at the institutional level. So basically, all the instructors, or uh, you know, all the professors that are in a specific institutions will be able to use class. We do this type of integration institutional level. Uh, so we zoom zero problems because it's it, it's part of the way we build our class solutions. And in terms of integration with a learning management system, whether desire to learn, for example, that you have mentioned, or whether you're using Moodle or, or Blackboard or Loaders, is a single sign-on integration done through a protocol called LTI. I know that I don't want to get too technical, but basically, you know, it's it's something that our engineer perform with your system administrator, a very straightforward integration, and basically. If I'm a student, I'm enrolled in 20 different courses. I just get with my own credentialing, my own e-learning platform. I just go to the platform, to the specific course. And then in that course, I will find that specific virtual classroom of class. And I click, I get in, I don't need to re-enter the credential. Everything is done automatically. I just wanted to clarify these aspects that normally could be of a concern. And just to add to Massimo's point in terms of the integration, as uh, you're right, class is built on the Zoom platform, so it's very much easy to integrate uh, and pretty much in terms of the LTI and setting it up uh, would be very smooth. Also, for example, if you have other LMSs you're using uh, that need to have multiple integrations. So we've even seen some universities or schools who have two flavors of LMS. They're using Moodle for one campus, they're using Blackboard, et cetera. And then now they move to class for Zoom that actually uh, takes care of all their issues because of the integration. Now you have one LMS or one solution you're using for the whole campus and it makes uh, life much more smoother in terms of the integration. Yeah. Sure. So thanks, Yav. I mean, that's, that's definitely uh, good to know i would also like to add that uh, uh, zoom was an automatic choice for uh, foundation of class because zoom is leader in terms of uh, uh, audio visual uh, components you know when you talk of meeting platforms zoom is definitely a leader and that's why to have uh, the the uh, synchronous learning tools on a platform zoom was an automatic choice so that's why this uh, tight integration between Zoom and uh, class. So if there are any more questions, uh, please feel free. Uh, okay. 
uh, I don't see any more questions. Uh, well, uh, with that, I'm sure you would have also uh, uh, answered the questions on the poll. Uh, it will be useful to see the uh, uh, see the responses uh, of those polls uh, maybe uh, now or later. Uh, and you also have our uh, contact details. Please feel free to uh, shoot your questions to us. We will be happy to even come down and meet your uh, meet in your respective campuses. Me, Ihav, and Masimo together or individually uh, will be more than happy to come down, meet uh, meet at your campus or meet virtually, whichever way you prefer. Uh, thank you again for taking the time out. We look forward to uh, hearing from you uh, in, in short term and also in the long term. It was nice to have you as the audience and uh, have a great day. Uh, thanks to our panelists, uh, Masimo, Ihab, uh, Shamima, and also uh, thank you to uh, the organizing team, which is Faisal, Shivang, and Roxana. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.